Creamers, I am Jameson Hill, and welcome to another episode of Get Creamy. Today on the show, I have an incredible singer, songwriter, dancer, Kaiza. You might know her from her hit song in 2014, Hideaway, where she toured the entire world. She got hit by a car, and now she's back. She just released a brand new album, and she is here in the studio with us today. Kaiza, how are you? I'm great. I'm ready to cream all over this podcast. So thank you, thank you for having me. so much for coming on the show. And listen, before we start this interview, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I am going to get so much cream out of her <laughs> that this whole place is going to be creamy. I'm getting intimidated. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> The more you like, the creamier it's gonna get, so. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> I'm ready! We, we Am I, should I be scared? I don't know, the, inter the internet's got, got, got stirred up. You did mention that you were a journalist. I, I'm playing one on, on, a, on a YouTube <laughs> channel. I play a journalist, like, um, am I a journalist? I don't know. Just like I act a, part, a pop singer, but I'm really a scientist. Okay, listen, if I had a huge budget, Right. <laughs> if I had a huge budget and like 15 writers like working for me, I probably would have walked in here, looked at these notes, and asked you a bunch of questions that somebody else read. Right. But I or did created. It but since it's just <laughs> me here, right. I had to go out and I had to do some investigative journalism to figure out like who the fuck you is Kaiser? What's more going about on? About me than I know about myself. That could be. <laughs> that could be. I don't know. I don't know how much research you did after the in injury to like. I know. I've forgotten a lot of things. Reacclimate yourself with all of your past interviews. For real. No, I've forgotten a lot. You know what's weird is that um, it's not that my, my memory has disappeared. It's that the um connection to my memories got a bit a bit joggled, and when uh -huh. people remind me, then it rewires the memory, and then I have it. But there's a lot of things that like got disconnected, and so I'll be like, I'll have the feeling of the moment. I just can't quite like connect the image. It's like the it's like half the memories there. Yeah. And then somebody would be like, "Oh, remember we were in this hotel wearing this shirt or something." And then suddenly it's like the brain's like, Whoop, "Oh yeah." And then I remember the whole thing. There's like this weird disconnection that I had to my my memories. And we're diving right into my head injury. <laughs> but um like I even forgot like childhood memories that uh -huh. were really important to me. Right. For a while and I was like panicking like I I I don't think I'm gonna remember my life. Like I think I've forgotten my whole life. How did you? How did like? How did some of those start to come back to you? Um, just some of them just started to reconnect over time as I was healing. Mm -hmm. And I swear, some are just like gone. And my uh, my aware my uh, ability to put things in order, moving backwards, is also kind of gone. Like I don't remember what order a lot of things happened, especially, like the years about hideaway and the touring and stuff like I can't put a lot of things into order uh -huh. so they're there they're not like in a timeline like they used to be like I used to be back if you're like what happened like what were you doing summer of like 2015 I could be like oh, I was doing this tour right I have like memories of the tours and stuff but I can't just like be like I was doing this like I have to like look at a calendar and be like ah, yes I was doing that like the timeline of things have completely gotten joggled. It's crazy. Do you think that even without a brain injury, th those things might have gotten past? I mean, you're you were doing. I was doing a lot for sure. Two hundred shows a year. But yeah, more. More. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, playing every day or something, right? Maybe two shows a day. Every other day, because like if I wasn't, let's say, doing a show, I was doing some sort of performance on radio. I was doing multiple interviews. I was doing something every day, pretty much, yeah. to the point where I crashed and yeah, it was not pretty. What was that like? The crashing? Yeah. Uh, one day, I actually woke up and my brain had like disconnected my body. Like it was like, you're not getting up. I literally could not move. I thought it was like, it was like almost like paralysis. Like I was like the energizer bunny. I could go, go, go. And I have a lot of will willpower. We were discussing willpower earlier. Mm -hmm. How much I don't have. <laughs> I do have willpower. If I'm sick or if I'm in pain or if I'm injured, I can just shut that off and keep going. Yeah. which is actually was a saving grace for my head injury because I think I would have given up if I was if I didn't have that aspect to me but I would just go 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 and even if I was sick I'd keep going I didn't want to let my fans down I didn't want to like 
a lot of the places I was touring and performing, it, I was only going once and I may never go back again. So I would think about that and like think this is the only time my fans may ever see me live in person. And if I cancel this show, that's it. Yeah. And it would make me sad. So I just wouldn't cancel even if I was sick. And then one day I woke up in a hotel room and I literally had just enough energy to pick up the phone and like call my team and be like, I legitimately cannot move. <laughs> like, I can't move. And they came in and they had like pump me full of steroids to like jumpstart my system again. It was crazy. Because I had a massive, I remember I had a massive show in Norway for like over 100,000 people. Oh, wow. And at a festival. And it was like a big deal, like five days later. And I had, uh, I think I was in New York. I had a bunch of events. I think I'd either just done, done a show or had to cancel a show or something. Um, we had to cancel a few things and then literally they just pumped me full of tons of steroids. I don't think it's healthy. But I managed to get on the stage in Norway like five days later. And did, you, did you get some like muscles? you have like some guns or something from them? I had some guns. Uh-huh. I'm not sure if that gave me any guns. <laughs> but you I had guns already. I had like abs. I had it all. I had it all. <laughs> walk, walk me through the process of rebuilding your brain after this massive brain trauma that you, that, that you suffered. Oh, God. It's, it's been the worst experience of my life, but also very... Um, very eye-opening with some silver linings. Like I had to grow as a person yeah. to get through this. So I definitely am coming out much stronger in terms of like my ability to have patience with myself. I am very patient with other people, but patience with myself is something I didn't have, mm -hmm. which I needed, you know, to heal. And then, like I, I had to kind of go on my own Sherlock Holmes mission with myself. Yeah. Because the brain is not understood. Even the most advanced neuroscientists and everything, they, it's, it's really a mystery to everybody right now. And um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of conventions out there that are, they're bringing people together to try to advance the understanding of the brain. But it's like, you know, I, even the understanding of Alzheimer's, I mean, every, so far everything is 100% failed. If you, like, if you want to know the facts, yeah. every treatment is, is a failure so far. Like, they don't understand the brain. Uh -huh. So when you go on your own mission to heal your own brain, you're really like, it's you with yourself. And like obviously there's st information out there like different therapies, oxygen therapies. There's a lot of therapies out there that have helped but they don't necessarily help you at the moment you're at. Like if you research hyperbaric oxygen, it's supposed to, it's you, they put you in this oxygen tank and they flood you with oxygen basically. Mm -hmm. But in my case, the, my injury was really severe and oxygen was actually really toxic to me at that point because my mitochondria had been like messed up my neurons had been stretched out and they weren't able to process and transfer the oxygen fast enough so oh i was wow. actually getting oxygen poisoning oh my god so i got put into an oxygen tank and i had a, almost had a heart attack but not a real heart attack but i was like i had, I had a panic attack like crazy too much I yeah didn't feel good right and that's because it was too soon in my injury it probably would help me now mm -hmm. you know years later so as much as like that helps some people and for me at the, that point in time it didn't help me so as much as there's all this like potential research and out there for the brain you have to just roadmap your own healing and so that's what i did i went on this journey and i found that actually when a brain's healing it hurts so he the healing of the brain doesn't feel good sure it's like it's like basically if you just imagine a bunch of highways that have just been through a storm and all these trees and cars are crashed in this road and the roads are not clear you know there's accidents all over them that's kind of like what's going on in my in or was going on or is still going on in my neural pathways like there's scar tissue there's like calcium leaking out of neurons causing poisoning that way like um i couldn't take anything with calcium because i get like toxicity from that oh wow because it leaks out yeah and it, hardens and it's it's crazy all the things that happen um so what i'm trying to do is force my brain to clear out these pathways clear out the scar tissue and that doesn't feel good <laughs> it's hard uh -huh. it's, it takes a lot of energy your, your body doesn't want to use energy it doesn't want to do that so anytime that i'm going through another healing process i have to mentally prepare for a lot of pain and i'm about to do that again with with like acting and stuff i've had a lot of people come to me for acting yeah but reading is something that just hasn't really come back to me. Mm -hmm. um, it really hurts my head to read, which sucks because I'm like an avid reader. I'm a science nerd, and like reading was part of like my life in many ways. Mm -hmm. And I that was taken away from me. And um, 
I can read it just very slowly with a lot of pain. So I just decided I'm gonna try to, my best to rehabilitate my reading, which means I'm gonna have to do it almost every single day repeatedly. And it, it feels like someone's pouring acid on my brain. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's severe pain, it's debil debilitating really. And I have to just mentally just push through it. Um, I have the biggest pain tolerance in the world now. Like mm. doctors are like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? Like you do not react to pain. Yeah. But it's because I lived in pain every day, still do. Um, I've just gotten really good at like handling it, really. It's amazing what you can do, what your body's capable of. You wrote Hideaway in about 90 minutes. Well, I wrote the actual song maybe in about <laughs> 10 minutes or less. <laughs> okay, 10 minutes or less. Because the production, like that song is very unique in the sense that yeah. it, the whole thing was done in 90 minutes. Yeah. Start to finish. Yeah, Everything yeah, yeah. you hear was uh -huh. done in 90 minutes. So fast. So now after this brain injury do you is, does it take you longer to write music or are since um, maybe no, I actually you're got more experienced faster. you have more I got stuff to faster draw from? at writing music um and the reason is because i am so like reading and writing and even like t taking a creative thought and turning it into like something in this 3d world that's you can hear or, you know it's like it's still writing and reading mm -hmm. writing lyrics and all that so that would collapse my brain which means I had a very small, short window to do it. So I had to get really fast at writing songs before my head triggered and just got inflamed, and then I'd be out for like a week at maybe afterwards, so. Interesting. Yeah, so I'd, I'd be like, okay, I feel like my head is at a manageable place where I could write a song right now. I would then go do it in like 15 minutes. Wow. Like fast, so. Now I'm really good at writing fast songs. Like I, it's funny because I've gone into a lot of studios and they're just like, "How do you do that?" <laughs> like, Can you write a song for bam. us right now? I could write a song for you right okay. now. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, give me a beat. I st I usually start with the melody. amazing guys uh, so song in three minutes two minutes 30 <laughs> seconds 30 30 30 seconds soon it's like 30 it's like cup of noodles it's like an entire meal in and in just in one exactly. one contained it's little like fast food only in the form of music i'm like a fast food restaurant i love that i love that <laughs> only a sonic fast food um but yeah so I had to like deliver melodies really fast and they had to be good i might alter like when as i was going i'm like okay i wish i went slightly to another place, so I'll do a few alterations. I often pull from the gibberish. Gibberish creates a lot of cool ideas. Uh-huh. Like, and then I just kind of just write lyrics as fast as I can. And if my head would swell up, even in the process of doing that, uh -huh. I'd step away and come back and rewrite them another day. Kaiza, thank you so much for coming today. It's been a pleasure unpacking all of your incredible life's journey, your work, thank what's you. been going on in your life and your new music. Can you let everybody know where to find you? Yes, you can <laughs> literally just type my name into Google, K-I-E-S-Z-A, and I'm a one word wonder, one name wonder, so like literally on any platform, just put at Kaiza. TikTok, I just started, so it's working my way up on that, but like Instagram, YouTube, it's so easy to find me. Like you, you, can't, you can't not find me if you go looking. So. Um, amazing, and listen guys, if you loved this conversation, which I'm sure you did, we got a lot of cream out of you. Please <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. And if you comment a question to Kaiza in the, yes. in the comments below, I will personally Force be me. making sure that she answers your comments. Yes, I will. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye guys. <laughs>